passive income, one of the best things in the financial world. But what are the downsides to it? Many people do not consider you rich, but while you're in the problem solving stage, you fail to see the problems with your AdSense. That becomes a problem that could make you millions in the long term. There is no surefire way to know whether you're going to succeed or not. There's no one pathway that will lead you to success. On average, a business fails nine times out of 10. Passive income is a form of income that generates you money no matter if you're working or not. It is passively making you richer. There are many forms of passive income, be it through rental properties, ad revenue, a passive business you set up in your 20s that is automatically making you money no matter what you do, and of course, dividend stocks. Many people do not consider you rich unless you have passive income streams making you richer and richer every day. Passive income is a great thing, but I feel that no matter how you look at it, there are some downsides that I need to address. Before we continue, make sure to like and subscribe with all notifications on and comment down below what you want to see next. Now, into the video. Number one is how it takes time and diversity to set up stable streams of income. To make sure that you are going to have passive income no matter what, you need to have many streams of income, not just one. That's where so many people go wrong with anything in life. They only focus on one thing. If that thing stops becoming profitable for them, they begin to struggle. With many streams of income, your life can become chaotic. One thing goes wrong with your rental properties and you turn all your focus towards that. But while you're in the problem solving stage, you fail to see the problems with your ad sense that becomes a problem. Once your passive income streams are up and running though, they're pretty passive. Here you could hire a team for just your rental properties or just your AdSense so they can manage that to make sure everything's going all right. But if you don't have the money for that, then you of course could hire one or two people. Or if you wanna do it on your own, that's perfectly fine. But just remember it could get chaotic. Once your passive income streams are up and running, they are pretty passive. However, when you're setting them up, it takes a lot of planning and time. For example, when you're using rental properties, you need to buy that property, then renovate it and find tenants. This takes a lot of time. You will probably have to do this many times over to create enough passive income to live off of. This takes time, capital, and a large emotional investment. The second thing we have to look at about passive income is how it takes a lot of capital to do it properly. This could be anything from giving up your own money or giving up your time that could make you money on other things. Time is money, especially if you could have been working on a side hustle that could make you thousands more per month or that you could have been learning a high income skill that could make you millions in the long term. Another thing that I want to talk about is how money doesn't add up to be too much compared to other sources of income. This is why having only one stream of income is not the best idea, especially if you're planning on using passive income to live off of or for your future retirement. If we are looking to invest in stocks, then it's going to take a lot of capital to make sure that you have enough money coming in per month to live off of. The third con to living off of passive income is how it can be isolating sometimes. Many people have friends from work or they enjoy having conversations with people in the break room or at the coffee machine. Many people enjoy that kind of work style. When you begin to live off of passive income, you will probably stop working unless you really enjoy what you do. An alternative to feeling isolated could be having friends who live off of passive income or are on the same path to financial freedom. This would make it much easier to talk to people about it or easier to meet up with people because you don't need to be in an office for eight hours a day or five days a week. Or they just understand what you're going through because they're on that journey or they've already gone through what you're going through. This point is a big one and I feel that everyone should listen carefully. There is no surefire way to know whether you're going to succeed or not. There's no one pathway that will lead you to success. No matter what paths people have taken and what they're telling you will work, it may not be 100% successful. You may encounter problems that they didn't or they got lucky and you didn't. Perhaps they had more money when they started than you do or maybe they had more time or they had a mentor. Anything could go wrong or be more difficult or easier depending on your circumstances. Everyone is different and no matter the path they have taken, it may not be right for you. You have to find your pathway. As I mentioned before, there isn't as much money coming in compared to other sources of income. This makes it take a lot longer than other investments to scale to a larger level than it's on. This means that unless you're planning on selling your real estate properties every five years, then you won't be able to expand as quickly as other investments, income streams, or businesses. There are many ways to double what you're buying every few years, but that involves buying and selling your assets, which doesn't sound too passive to me. Enough of the droopy, upsetting topic. Let us talk about examples of passive income and talk about if they have any certain characteristics that I've mentioned on this list. One, 
we of course have rental properties. These can either be very passive or very hands-on. At the beginning, it takes a lot of capital to make sure that you can afford the down payment and the renovation. Alongside a hefty down payment, you need to invest a lot of time to renovate the property and find tenants to rent it out to. If you don't want to spend time renovating and finding the tenants for your property, you can hire a team to work for you, but that will cost you even more money. Two, dividend stocks. Investing in these stocks don't have a large time down payment, but they do have an enormous money investment to make sure that you can live off of these. This could be as easy as investing $1,000 into these once a month, week, or even a day. Remember that this will take time. It may take more time than rental properties if you are investing a small amount, but no matter what, this will take time to set up. Third, starting a business. This is going to cost you the most money and time up front. It takes people over a decade to make a business profit. On average, a business fails nine times out of 10. If your business does succeed, then it could become very passive for you with employees working for you, creating passive income. This is the riskiest and most time consuming investment as you have to be the one running the company for the first few years of its existence. Although it has high risk, it could make you very, very wealthy. Just look at Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk or Bill Gates. Anyways, that's the video for today. I don't usually make videos on the cons of only one thing, but more often than not on the pros and cons. What I'm thinking of doing at some point is making a video where I talk about the pros only and how you can leverage it to make a lot of money. Enough of the rant. Make sure to like and subscribe with notifications on if you enjoyed this video. Comment down below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video.